Call the council meeting to order. Uh, first thing is a uh, motion to accept the agenda. Callahan and Broden. All in favor? Carry. Declaration of pecuniary interest, if any. None noted. So for the Reeves report, uh, from the last meeting, I said uh, good entertainment coming. Uh, the Jimmy Key concert at the Legion of Wingham as a fundraiser for Wingham's homecoming. A very entertaining night. Uh, many laughs to be had and good music enjoyed. And uh, the next night uh, at the Theater of Live, uh, I know that there's a number of people at it. Uh, the Fred Eaglesmith concert, a little bit different than most concerts, uh, definitely a touch of redneck. <laughs> hey Dave? Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, but, uh, very good though, and uh, a number of other ones uh, uh, were at uh, the Barn dance <coughs> celebrations, which went really well too, I understand. Um, moving on to the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, do I have a motion? Deputy Reed Breach and Councillor Campbell. Any questions or Councillor Helen? Just, just a minor correction. I think you had the kilometers between uh, two oh. landfills of four kilometers was seventeen. Seventeen? I know at the time we questioned it uh, from the meeting. Thank you, Ray. All in favor of the motion? Carry. Uh, no deputations? Okay. Moving into department reports. Nothing in health and safety. And okay. Uh, Moving right to point three, the administration. Um, who is handling that uh, report on? Okay, um, Gary. Okay, thank you, Rich. Uh, you have the report in front of you uh, that uh, was prepared by our manager of employee and, and business services, Richard Al. And uh, I'd be pleased to answer any questions you have about um, the costs and options uh, that we have to um, broadcast uh, or record and or record uh, council meetings. Uh, Richard has provided a <coughs> recommendation at the uh, top of the staff report. Please take any questions on his behalf. Just curious, Gary. I don't. Time frames. Were you speaking to Richard and what time frames he thought it would take him to get that up in the room? The feeling I have is that uh, he has as well that we can implement this uh, fairly quickly. Probably not by the June 17th meeting, but uh, perhaps early July, right. early to mid July. Okay. Good one, well, summer. <coughs> Do I have a seconder? Can we still log in? Further discussion? All in favor? Carry. Uh, moving to finance and treasury. Uh, Donna, do you want to? Thank you. Um, yeah, so you had your uh, year to date budget report. So if you want to take a look at those and if you had any questions, send me an email. The department heads are reviewing theirs and uh, we're make, working through a few changes to um, monthly to keep that up to date. Um, the second item is a request for an increase in the digital signature for the Reeves um, uh, signing of checks. 
So when we implemented that a few years ago, what that was is um, a time-saving process where the REEV would not have to sign any checks up to the $40,000 figure. So as times have changed over the last few years, the main reason for doing that was um, regarding the payroll deductions, the owners and the receiver general, because we only have uh, three days to, from the time those payrolls are issued to have those um, amounts paid to them, and that's where we were running into trouble sometimes if we couldn't find either Dave or Neil within the three-day time frame. So, um, we implemented the digital signatures, and it's worked very well, but as times have uh, changed, we set out a $40,000 limit, which was pretty close at the time we implemented it. Now we're finding that we're going over that slightly. So what we're looking for is a staff request to increase that signature requirement from um, up to 50000 So what that would mean is that Neil doesn't have to sign any of the checks up to 50000 but anything over, any single check over $50,000, we do have to catch him. So, for example, all through all this construction in the last couple of years, when we were paying contractors all the time, we were always trying to have to catch Neil to uh, sign all those big checks. So um, that is... Um, to make our business up to date, we are requesting as staff the increase to 50,000. Councillor Vaughn? I would move that we make that increase to 50,000. Okay, do I have a seconder? No second. Deputy Lee Breach. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Thank you, and that would be effective as at today's date. The uh, next item is an increase in uh, cash management online banking. And uh, through CIBC, we participate in CMO banking, which is online cash management. Um, we're finding that that's working very well. Right now, our limit for that, um, we just started that um, um, less than a year ago on a $200,000 daily limit. But with, uh, again, with our ever-increasing expenses, and now what we're trying to do is move to um, as much payments online as possible. Eventually, our goal is, is that we not issue any checks. Um, that's a future goal, and that's the way uh, a lot of companies are moving. It certainly um, um, causes a lot less problems if you're not actually physically issuing the check. So what happens with this is we pay all our utility bills and, and uh, all of that type of thing online. And where we're running into a problem is if it happens to fall on the same day as payroll, then our limit of $200,000 isn't enough to be able to do all the transactions. So um, with all the hydro bills and, and such that we're paying, um, and it's just not working out. So we would like to increase that daily limit from uh, from the current 200,000 up to 500,000. Does anybody have any questions about that? Councilman no, Bill. Just what is the, is the payroll run? The A payroll run, I just was asking Kathy that, is um, it's about 125,000 at a time. So as I said, we're trying to move ahead forward with all, take advantage of all the options. And as I said, eventually our goal would be, um, then you wouldn't experience any um, outstanding checks at the end of the month. You would have no late payment charges, any of those kinds of things, because what would happen is we would drop our payments into our suppliers' bank accounts on the days that they're due, and then it would be, you know, would completely come out of our bank account. They would have their money, um, so there wouldn't be any, you know, tracing checks in the mail and any of that kind of stuff. So, anyway, we're trying to keep up with the times, one small step at a time, so. Councilor Little, how many times a year would you find yourself not being able to do that, like go to what, without the increase? Um, since we've just, as I said, we haven't been on it that long, Bernie, and um, uh, I'm not sure how many days a year that would actually be. I can't answer that right now. But um, 
We had, as I said, maybe also um, because we have had so much construction and we're still going through some construction um, going on and that, that we're finding that it, um, it certainly wouldn't be every day um, or even maybe it wouldn't even be every week, but it, it does occur and it makes it difficult. Councilor Biden? Uh, it just strikes me that it's a huge jump from yeah, 200,000 to 500,000. And I was wondering, um, why would you pick that number? Are there, is there an accumulation of that amount at any given time? Or what would the maximum accumulation be with your experience in the past year? Um, we have we have hit up to the 500,000, so um, um, we picked that. And the thing is, we may not ever even have to use it. Like it, it as you said, it may only happen that we actually needed the 500,000. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times. It depends on when the due dates. A lot of it is because the due dates for our suppliers and stuff vary, and we vary them with council meetings as well when we pay them, and payroll varies, and the holidays um, fluctuate into it as well. If you're not comfortable with, with it quite that high, that's fine. We could try, say, 350 and see how that goes for a couple of months and then if we had any problems on a consistent basis then we could um, bring that back to you I'm sorry, just as, as a reply I, I think i feel a little more comfortable with that it's not that that it means that we'd be spending more money or throwing money oh, away no, not at all. Uh, but it just seems it just seems like a like a big jump i i would be comfortable with trying the 350 sure uh, Seconder, Councilor McGowan, second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, thank you. And we'll keep you posted on that. Um, also, I just wanted to note that uh, Kathy and I are off to the AMCT annual conference in Collingwood um, on Sunday. So that runs Sunday to Wednesday. So. Um, we can let you know when we get back of any new and exciting items that come up there. And also one last item that's not on your agenda, the um, FIR, our financial information return, is always due to be filed with ministry on May 31st. And uh, we did meet that deadline on May 31st and we're able to um, get our reports filed. And then um, just today I received our first draft of our, of our actual financial statements from our auditors. I haven't even had a chance to have a look at them yet. So um, once I review them, then um, we'll make an appointment with the auditor to come in and present them to you. There's still some things that they're working on to finish up 2012. So anyway, those are some big items out of the way for sure. Any questions? Um, Councilor Bales, going back to the uh, staff report year to date, we're at the six month period right now. Um, I honestly briefly looked at it this afternoon, but I haven't had a chance to go through. Is there anything that jumps out that we should be aware of or anything that you're concerned about? Anything off track from your um, point of view? Yeah, nothing right at the moment. Like that just takes us to basically to the end of May. So, um, um, a lot of our the things that we do, as you know, are, are either front-ended or back-ended. Like, mm -hmm. For example, a lot of the you know the snow plowing and stuff will look out of whack until till later on. Um, there's nothing in particular. Um, as I said, I'm working with the department heads um, to take a look at, the, at each one of theirs. The only one is, and I've spoken with Keith about it, is um, EST Center. Um, so, and uh, we've talked to both uh, Stephanie and Keith um, on that, and so their their actual busy, busy time is coming up the next few months. So um, Stephanie will be really watching watching that very closely. But uh, that's probably thank you. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Uh, Business arising from previous meetings is there anything? Uh, moving to new business, the Water Protection Steering Committee and the Healthy Lake Term Funding Request. Um, wants to speak 
for that. I think we provided it for, for council consideration. And this group, this working group, has proposed a, a resolution for council's consideration. I don't think the staff has any more comments here. Councilor Lawton? I would move that we support that uh, action. I think that our lakeshore is vital to uh, to all of us, even though we don't touch touch it. But uh, I think uh, I think it's something that we should support. I move that. No, this is supported in principle. Um, I think I'd be a little careful before I endorse that. Um, I'd be concerned that it was 18.1 million I seen in there, and I didn't see where they were getting the money. They're looking for money. Um, as a rule, usually when you endorse something, it's usually followed by a request for financing. And I just start. I don't think our uh, North Huron's in a position to throw a lot of money out. So <coughs> just just throwing a heads up there. You're endorsing the idea to have a. a they need a lot of money to do what they want to do. And if you endorse it, they're going to come looking for money. That's just life. But I'll maybe make a comment on that. That North Huron is part of the 350000 that County Council uh, gives to the uh, Clean Water Committee. And that it helps out with a lot of the projects. Also in North Huron, though, the number of things that we can do in our own <coughs> municipality that help out uh, is also uh, the excellent support that North Huron is providing. Uh, I haven't gone doing a good job on water and wastewater uh, for the municipality and having things up to standard is a big step towards uh, what is being asked for in these uh, five different areas that they are working. A big part of the funding, it is hoped to get money out of foundations, etc., uh, to help uh, support that, uh, being that there's hundreds of thousands of people use uh, the East Shore, of Lake Huron, uh, Tobermory, uh, right down. Uh, so that um, I see nothing wrong with uh, the motion of support in principle, uh, and it does not necessarily have to carry financial implications. Councillor McGowan? Through, through you to Councillor Bailey, just for clarification, because I, I want to make sure I haven't met something, because the way I read it was, it sounded like we were, uh, if the resolution speaks to respectfully requesting the province to fund the money and the feds through Environment Canada, but did I, maybe I haven't read closely enough and there's something in the document did, that Councillor um, Bailey has seen that makes him nervous, just so we're all on the same page. Well, it's nothing I see at uh, Councillor McGowan. It's nothing I see in the document, it's except for the fact that they're requesting this financing. They have not received it. And if they don't receive it, then they've got to go looking for money. And as a person that has a cottage on the East Coast of Huron, I'm really interested in it cleaning up. So it's not a matter of cleaning it up. It's a matter of who's going to pay the bill. Deputy Reeve Reach. The only uh, thing that I missed in this, and maybe I read over it and didn't see it, but I didn't see uh, any First Nations participation. Actually, there is supposed to be. The level, I cannot say, but there has been correspondence gone to them. What has come back, I can't say. Uh, Councillor Campbell. Some of these funding is for projects that, that did not get funding when they requested funding. Uh, the Glen Garvey one is one that Maitland Valley is working with. And so some of the funding they're looking for is extra funding to finish some of the projects that have been started. And it is through government that they're trying to get these projects. And the, <coughs> the total project will be drawn out if funding isn't uh, found mm -hmm. uh, that 
it'll just take more years to do it. But uh, in McGarvey Glen, uh, I was all through it the, just under two months ago uh, with the Maitland Valley Water Action Team. And that it's a very involved pilot project uh, and that it's a number of I'll say smaller burns to control runoff and slow runoff down to reduce the erosion effects. And that uh, it should work, um, is what I'd say. So that we do have a motion, and that I, I personally see nothing wrong with the motion, that uh, it will definitely be another motion if they're asking us directly for money. Uh, is there any further comments or questions on the motion? <laughs> just to be typical. Okay. So just to follow up, I, I don't mean a long answer, but so if Councilor Bailey's nervousness does you know bear fruit, uh, where will this group get their funding from? The second question is I don't see anything within the report. Maybe there's been other documentation with regards to protection from. <laughs> Uh, I know a number of years ago there was quite a bit of negotiation going on about uh, American water use out of the Great White Lakes and how much water was being taken. Is that part of this protection as well? I know that's at a much higher level than we're at, but I, I think that's something that has to be top of mind as well. It's part of the discussions that the Southeast Working Group works out in the whole Great Lakes uh, system, and the Southeast <coughs> Working Group of which Deb Schufelt, well, I, I believe, it, is, is one of the ones, uh, and that uh, I believe that ACW also has a membership in the Southeast Working Group, so that Ben Van Diepenbeek is also involved in some of that discussion at the higher level. So, so is Central. Okay. Yeah, they have a representative line. Thank you. Uh, anything <coughs> further? All in favor of the motion? Carried. Okay. Council information and correspondence. Points that councillors would like to bring forward. Uh, um, going through the accounts payable, uh, we're, we're paying Bell Mobility, Bell Canada, and some to Rogers, and some to East Lake, and so on. Have we ever considered uh, putting all of our communications with with one uh, with one carrier? And is there any advantage to doing that? Yes, we have looked at that. Richard, um, that was one of the little studies that we did ask him to look into and to um, go through that. Now, some of them are on contracts. I don't know if you know what the time frame is off the top of your head, but um, definitely we would move, like to move towards uh, one provider for sure um, so that we're only dealing with one. And again, it's, um, all of these have all different due dates and all different terms of their contracts, et cetera. So um, definitely it's something that we're trying to move towards, um, you know, a preferred contractor on that. And as I said, Richard did that study end of last year, I believe, that was, um, um, he was able to save us quite a bit of money just even going through that and uh, making sure that um, we deleted any options that weren't being used. And so therefore we were able to drop you know, some of those savings and combining what he did. But that was kind of step one. Okay. Um, at that time, we didn't switch too many of the, um, because we were involved in a contract, we had to, we have to finish some of those out. But yeah, definitely. Okay. Commissioner Bailey. A few questions. On the very first page of the accounts payable, we have uh, $1,159 for a cell phone bill. 
Is that a month for a cell phone? No, that's all the um, <coughs> departments that have their phones with Rogers is what is exactly what you were just saying with what Dave was asking. Me. So, uh, Kathy, do you know how many approximately would have a Rogers as opposed to? I think all of our cell phones now are with Rogers with the exception of the police. Those are still with Bill Mobility. I go to page three. I've got uh, Don Eby. Uh, for $904 for supervision of defibrillators, I believe that's going to end up saying. What's that about? Who is that? What's that about? Seven years. What is it? Um, defibrillator. Oh, that's the, there's a yearly charge for them to look after a defibrillator if we use it. It's, they give us a course once a year and he monitors whatever the defibs are doing in the trucks. I go to page five, I've got Maitland Valley uh, Conservation, and it's the tree order for just about $4,000. I believe we do this every year. Where are the trees and where do they go? Like, Pat and Kelly and Dawn can probably answer that for you. A great deal of that, about $2,800 of that total is the trees that council purchases and uh, donates up to residents. And residents can apply for one tree per property, and I think two if they have a farm. Um, so they're, I guess, all over the place in our municipality. Um, and then the rest are purchased uh, for parks, um, trailer park, so and landfill. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else wants to step in? Go ahead. Oh, page, six. <laughs> <laughs> page six. Page six, I've got bumper stickers right at the top for $932. Um, the uh, last meeting you actually had one on your desk. It's to promote the Blythe Campground, so that's for 3,000 bumper stickers. And that's how many bags of information we hand out at the campground annually, um, whether it's a flyer about the campground or a bumper sticker. So in the past, we had purchased pens to give out, but uh, after looking at options, this was a less expensive option, and we're hoping that <coughs> people often, travelers around North America, put these stickers on their trailers, and then they can, if they have our website and everything um, on it. So it says, I love the campground, and um, hopefully they'll learn about our campground. Thank you. Just out of curiosity, what were we spending before on the pens? I'd have to go back, but they were more than 30 cents a piece, and these worked out to around 30 cents a piece. So it's a she, oh, how many pens did you get in there? I'm going to have to get back to them. That was okay. over a year ago. I can't remember. Would you like me to get that information? Uh, it's it's easy to get. Just email me. Sure. Time. Okay. Just one more. Oh, okay. Just one more. Um, oh, it's right at the page if it starts at Good bottom one. one, but it's, uh, some of you probably know whichever category this falls. It's for video camera inspection for $1,881. What page is that for me? Uh, it says page one, but it's... it's oh, it's you're sewer. into... Are you into water or that sewers? Into the sewers? That is uh, some uh, camera work that was done in the fly sewers. Uh, we were trying to investigate the wire holes or higher. Thank you very kindly. Here, just on point number three, our chief, the building official, will be bringing forward uh, information uh, regarding uh, renewable energy as well as uh, wind turbine information at the next council meeting on June 17th. <coughs> now, council recall, the council requests information from our CBO. Uh, he is preparing that information um, as part of a report, and that information would, would be available on June 17th. Uh, point number four on the Heritage Conservation District Workshop. Um, that should be a, a very interesting workshop if some of us can make it. I know that I have three other commitments on that day besides that, so I can't say that I would make it, but I would like to. And the counselors that could make it, I think it would be worthwhile. Okay. 
other uh, concerns? One, no, not a concern, a question just through you to Gary or Donna. Um, with the letter in the package from the OPP with regards to the placing framework costs increasing, um, do we know yet, I, I realize I read the second letter that we, we haven't reported the information, but it shouldn't be too difficult maybe for us to figure out what our increase is going to be in our uh, non-contract leasing for East Holland Ocean Black. Do we have some ideas? Um, just that it's going to go up. The increase here projected is 8.5%. Eight eight yeah, eight percent. Percent. So I haven't done any projections on that this time. Were you having any meetings about this or? No. No. And I knew that was coming, but I just wondered. I, I don't know what, uh, whether we have the ability to sort of uh, extend that out, figure out what the cost increase in implications would be to the municipality. No. I don't yeah. have it. No. Okay. This is all I got to. Okay. So if there's nothing else to be brought forward uh, or commented on in council information or correspondence, do I have a motion to receive, read, and file? Sorry. Councilor McGowan, Councilor Bodden. All in favor? Carry. Uh, moving to committee reports. Uh, first, Maitland Valley. Right. Yeah, I have a question, maybe for Councillor <coughs> Campbell. Um, when I'm reading in here, I'm, I'm, it says that Union Valley Phony Advisory Committee staff not to pursue the funding campaign for the Wallace Ash Nature Center. Is are they going to what's going to happen over there? The uh, the classroom that they had there on the end of the barn. Uh, is in very bad shape. A lot of has to do with the snow coming off the roof. And right now with Macon Valley, they're, they're kind of looking at doing some restructuring and they haven't decided whether to go ahead at the nature center or they're going to do some change at the false reserve. So right now everything is kind of on hold. They're waiting to have some studies done. They're looking to maybe move their stuff from Maitland, from the Nature Center to the Falls Reserve for educational purposes. But nothing has been confirmed of what they're going to do. But they're just uh... so right now. There's there's nothing going on in there. Like that. No, there's nothing going on in my classroom as far as. as yeah, but there is all kinds of courses going on at the Nature Center. They are actually book solid, but they're all outside activities that they're doing. And then the Falls Reserve, what's, that, what's happening there? They have everything's kind of put on hold there too. Um, right now they're in the process of looking for somebody to probably, uh, <coughs> if they're interested in leasing, okay. same idea for we down here at the campground here. There needs to be a lot of maintenance work done, uh, especially in the, uh, well, you know what the trailer hookups need. They don't have those big services in there for bigger trailers now. And, and it's, it costs a lot of money to go ahead and do that. And, uh, they just don't have the money to do it. Uh, it was moved there at the last council, at the last board meeting, and they thought it should just be put onto the levies for the municipalities to help do this extra work that's done at the campground. And that was turned down by. So I guess this question, do they have any reserves for this stuff? No. They do have some reserves, but they want to make sure that the campground is a viable campground. And whether camping on a hole is going down, it's not going up. And so they're just, they're kind of in the limbo here. What do we do? I think the cost of it is over $2 million to bring the campground up to standards. And they don't have that kind of money. So that's, everything's kind of in hold, on hold right now. Uh, some of your provincial campgrounds have got provincial money. I understand Point, Point Farms got over six hundred thousand dollars to do upgrades in their campground. We're not a provincial campground. Thank you. So that's kind of the things we're at. Yeah. 
moving forward to North Huron Police Services. Um, I'd be willing to take any questions. The one item that uh, I'd ask council to take notice of is that the uh, Police Services Board has uh, sent a motion uh, supporting the coordinated bargaining process for the next round of bargaining across the province. And what that is is a lot of uh, small municipal police services boards that are uh, included in the Ontario Association of Police Services Board are trying to end all their contracts at the same time with their police services in order that they can bargain jointly in the next round of bargaining, which will come up 2015 or so. So that will be something we'll keep council up to date on the process. Okay, thank you. Anything, questions or comments from others? Okay. Uh, moving to Wingman Area Health uh, Professional Recruitment Committee. There's questions, I will try to answer them. Okay. Moving forward to bylaws. Bylaw number 45, 2013, being a bylaw to, de to delegate to the County of Huron all or part of the municipality's power to pass a bylaw in respect to the destruction or injuring of trees in woodlots. Uh, Gary, go ahead and give some background. Okay, thank you. Just, some, just by way of background. County Council has authority under the Municipal Act to regulate woodlands. And uh, in 2006, our municipality, North Huron, passed a bylaw delegating uh, to the county the authority to regulate the destruction or injuring of trees and woodlots. And so we, uh, it is recommended that uh, a new bylaw delegating the authority to the county uh, be passed which references uh, the new County Forest Conservation Bylaw 38 2013. Uh, just, just a question. question. Yeah, I have a question for Gary before we the county of Huron, all or part of the municipality. How do they know which is, whether they're getting all of our authority or part of it. The, the way this is worded, it says all or part. Are they going to choose some for the well, lack of this? We could specify. Should we not specify that? I'm just asking questions. Like, are we leaving this barn door wide open? The In having worked on the Maitland Valley Terrestrial Committee for years and some of the inside of following the county tree bylaw, I think a big part of it is the manner that people would be uh, doing things, that you have the right to cut for firewood for your own use. Uh, no matter what uh, in that bylaw, but the the idea of anything over half an acre, up to an acre, being called the wood lot and being covered by the bylaw, that I know of some people that because of changing machinery size have to eliminate some trees to go from one field to the other. And that uh, I, I don't see that being an infringement upon the bylaw. But in the strictest enforcement, it probably could be construed as that you were taking out uh, some trees on, a, I'll, be, I'll say, a fence bottom. And there is a number of fence bottoms that can be construed as being over half an acre. But um, it really doesn't answer the question of all or a part. Shouldn't it be specified? Uh, it, it would be up to the township 
to specify if there was part that we didn't want uh, them doing, or uh, conversely saying, well, the county has staff to monitor this and to follow up. I would suggest from a legal perspective that if you don't designate them for what Councillor Bailey is saying, the presumption would be it takes care of everyone, everywhere. It is all yes. encompassing. Yes. I think that's the answer what Councillor Bailey is yeah. okay. So just go with take all and take the other part out. Like we're just throwing it around now. I would imagine this is a <coughs> format that's been given by the county. This is definitely a format. Um, my question is the, we have woodlot or means land at least on two hectare or half an acre in area and no greater than 2.47 acres in area with at least blah blah blah. Um, what about a woodlot that's 10 acres? Is that, that not is a woodland. Pardon? Everything over the 2.47 is a woodland. And not a woodlot. Correct. That is terminology that has been used. Okay. <laughs> An education here. Just one other question, Your Worship. Certainly. We did have a bylaw in place previous to this one. Uh, that my understanding is that the township had delegated to the county right. in the in a previous county bylaw. Okay, so my follow-up question, if I might, is to you or to the, the clerk. I understand from what you said, if I'm correct, that I heard what you said correctly, that the, the only difference between the bylaws is the number. There's no other differences within the wording or the language. Because if, unless we're sure there is, I'd like to see a copy of the old bylaw. But if you're if you're comfortable that the wording is exactly the same, it's just the bylaw number such as the Reeve described earlier. There's then that's fine. some small tweaks in the the species and uh, stuff like that in the uh, full bylaw, but basically it is very very close to what we have been using. Gary, do you have a little more? And the information that I have from the county is that uh, the county bylaw 38 2013 replaces county bylaw 10 2006. And uh, the, this draft bylaw is a, is a generic delegation bylaw that can be tailored by the municipalities. So it is, it is for all intents and purposes mostly similar to the one that we had in place before. Yes. Okay. First, second, third. Okay, do I have a seconder? Councillor Walden seconds. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Bylaw number 46, 2013. Being a bylaw to authorize the Reeve Clerk to sign on behalf of Council an agreement between Tucker Smith Communications Cooperative Limited and the Corporation of the Township of North Huron for lease of space for fiber optic equipment in the Emergency Services Training Center at Bly. Do you have a description of the of the space that's being considered here? Gary, do you um, have that? I believe there's a reference in the uh, the draft agreement as to where the cable and equipment will be located, to that furnace room or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe it's about five feet wide, or a room five feet. They're going to just put in the, build a wall put the equipment in there so that they have, it's a secure access for them that nobody could get in. That's my understanding. I had, I just came aware of it last week and I was looking down there. So we're looking at a couple different spots. It apparently has to be near an outside wall, so. Thanks. Okay. 
for a second, Kurt. Council Campbell and Deputy Green Freak. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Council reports and inquiries. Uh, Revenge, so I'd like to uh, make a couple comments. Uh, one is to comment on the on the news reporting uh, that we get from our legitimate press in North Huron, and to say that when they print stories, they uh, identify the author of the story, and they um, they also uh, uh, print the or, yeah print the name of the photographer of the story. We have another. Uh, press in present that uh, doesn't subscribe to the same uh, uh, standards and they took a picture of, uh, of an employee in Blythe that was standing against a truck on the main street talking to a resident. They didn't bother to do any follow-up or research on the story, which I did, and I found out that our municipal employee was talking about sump pump hookups and sewer hookups in the village. He was getting back to the resident on what, or on a question that the resident had asked earlier. The, the storyline in the Wingham Free Press doesn't identify the photographer, doesn't identify the author, and they don't do a follow-up on the story, and they uh, they say that our municipal employees are standing around doing nothing. I looked up on the internet the definition of bully, and it's to treat abusively, to reflect by means of force or coercion, to use browbeating language or behavior, or to intimidate a person who uses strength or influence to harm or intimidate those who are weaker or unable to defend themselves. I think the Wingham Free Press owes a municipal employee and the resident and North Huron Council an apology for writing a story that has no basis, no facts to it, and intimidates and harasses and bullies a municipal employee. I think the apology should also go to the uh, municipality of North Huron because of their bullying and intimidating tactics that they use in their free press. Also the fact that they have no sense of humor and a couple meetings ago where we were talking about Brock Baden being disagreeable, it was a lighthearted exchange, uh, they have blown that out of proportion at the last meeting. Uh, they accused uh, Councillor McGowan of bullying uh, Denny Scott of the citizen uh, for his comments made uh, during a council meeting. And I, I'm, I guess I'm disturbed that we allow or that uh, somebody who claims to be a newspaper or press is carrying on in such a way that their tactics are bullying, they don't identify their authors, they don't identify their photographers, and they don't issue apologies when they are wrong. Thank you, Reed Benson. Thank you. I just have one question. Which was the first time yeah. I actually heard this. Danny, I'm most apologetic. Were you offended by what I said? Because you and I have worked together for years. Oh, okay. Are you? I wasn't told. Oh, oh you well, that's good end. because I'd, I'd be really, you know, upset if I. I, I, I have a weekly editorial. If you make it in there, then you know. Then I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> like one might choose to pick on Denny because he, he roots for the Habs. I would never do that, though. I mean, <laughs> it's an affliction. I know. I understand. <laughs> Councilor Bond. If we're finished with that uh, topic, I'd like to go on to another one. I'm done. I've said my piece. Uh, next Wednesday, uh, we have uh, the next meeting of the uh, Blythe Hullet uh, Township uh, Landfill uh, Board. 
And uh, in preparation for that, I've been doing quite a bit of research on the uh, old records that we have, the old files that we have on that, uh, on that board. Uh, because there are some issues that are, are coming up and, and there are some ongoing issues about it. So the meeting is being held on Wednesday and the main topic is going to be the 2012 annual report on the landfill site. This is report number 24. So this has been going on for a very, very long time. As we know, as we all know, uh, the landfill business is a very highly regulated uh, proposition by uh, the provincial government. The Ministry of it, uh, Environment dictates to the municipality, mostly through the engineering firm, because they're better at understanding the uh, engineering language than most of us. Uh, the municipality manages the site and follows orders and pays the bill. I'm just giving some background here. Most of us are aware of this, but the members of the public may not know the background of this, so I just want to fill in some some basic information. Uh, the municipality manages the site and it follows orders and pays the bills. Uh, the records start uh, in terms of annual reports back as far as 1985. Um, and almost from the outset, there have been many reports or comments about uh, chloride levels in the uh, uh, adjacent area to the landfill. Um, and uh, almost every report has a discussion about the tannery waste that was deposited in there for a number of years. Um, at one point, uh, there was a serious look at other alternative places where the, where the, the uh, tannery waste could be placed. And the, actually, the ministry suggested the mid here landfill site. And that was uh, proposed to them, and they replied saying that, uh, that their uh, certificate of, of uh, approval did not include Hullet Township, even though uh, amalgamation had taken place and Hullet was in the same uh, community as, uh, as uh, Central Huron. But anyway, that got them off the hook. And uh, so uh, North Huron issued a, uh, a letter to, uh, to uh, the tannery people that uh, the, their waste would not be accepted after March, 20, March 31st, 9, uh, 2004. So there's been no, uh, no tannery waste uh, entered into the, the uh, landfill site after that date. Uh, there were some uh, earlier reports from 1980, 1994, but there were no references to, uh, to uh, those pro uh, problems that early. So in the meantime, uh, there have been uh, drilled well, uh, uh, well drill drills have, have been performed, uh, sinking uh, devices for measuring the uh, water quality at various levels. And I would estimate that there are at least 20 wells in existence now. There may be a few more than that because some didn't work out well, so they were discounted. But there's a large number of wells. And even last year, there are, I think, five more wells drilled along Road 25. Sur surface water tests are also done on a regular basis. Most of these sites are, are inspected and monitored uh, twice a year. And uh, there's concern about the the plume of chloride, which is moving away from the site. Allegedly. At, alleg allegedly, yes. Um, and uh, there, there's some, some uh, reason to believe that, uh, that these are accurate, but we don't know what the levels are, really, because it mixes in with road salt, which, uh, which is uh, a confusing factor. And, and they're trying to, uh, they put these uh, wells along Road 25, Blythe Road, and then they thought, well, maybe we better go beyond that, away from the plume, and drill a well there and find out if there's any chloride where the plume has not reached. Well, yes, they got some reading for chloride. Definitely must be road salt. But then they think, well, no, maybe the road salt is not being distributed evenly. So 
maybe we should drill a few more wells further away from the site so that we can average the differences so this will compensate for any uneven distribution of salt. So semi-annual drill uh, testing is going on at these sites. Uh, the cost of drilling wells is, uh, is, is uh, huge and uh, the monitoring is expensive and the report writing is probably even more expensive than all the drilling. Uh, the reports are very technical in nature and could not be produced by lay persons. We can't do that for ourselves. Uh, unless you want to send me away to university, become an engineer, maybe we could manage this. But last year, uh, this cost North Huron, their share of it, $35,000. And uh, I imagine that Central Huron was par charged probably a bit more than that, and that, that proportion is, is shifting as time goes on. So I spent a couple of days going through our files on the Blythe Hullet landfill site, and they tell us uh, what is happening in and around the landfill. But it doesn't appear to me that this intense investigation has had any effect whatsoever on what's happened to the fluoride spread. I want to tell you a little story that seemed to bring this into context. There was a man walking along through the countryside, and he came across a river. There was a gentleman standing on the riverbank, and his clothing was all wet, and beside him was a pile of dead human beings that had obviously drowned and been pulled out of the river. So a moment later, the man wades back into the river, retrieves another body, brings it out on the bank, and lays it on top of the group, and then stations himself again watching for more bodies. So this went on for some time. Every, every little while, another body would appear, and he would pull it out of the river and put it on the stack. Finally, he went up to the man and he said to him, uh, why don't you go up river and find out why all these people are drowning? Maybe you could do some good. Maybe you could avoid some of this. And he said, oh, I can't do that because I might miss some bodies. And it seems to me that, that we're doing exactly the same thing in this process. We're studying where the flow is going, we're, but we're not doing a thing to stop it, or to change it, or to solve the problem. Uh, now, not being an engineer, I, I don't know what the solution is. But we've had a lot of engineering expertise uh, in our, our engineering firm, and they've done a terrific job. And we've got a lot of engineering expertise, apparently, in the Ministry of Environment. And they've had their heads together, they've written reports, they've done all kinds of things, they've spent hours on it, and it's cost us and Central Huron a huge pile of money, and yet I am almost certain that if we had done nothing between 1985 and today, it, the situation would be exactly the same as it is now. I don't think they've done anything that solved any problems. Now, I know that we uh, would, would get laughed out of the stuff if we went down and told the Ministry of the Environment that we're going to give up and we're not going to do anything anymore. But uh, I, I think that uh, we need to take this whole thing into a broader context. We have other landfill sites, and they're going to be affected overly. And I, I would just like to ask why uh, the engineering community does not spend more time thinking about solving the problem rather than just uh, measuring it. So I realize that we're, we're firmly locked into the status quo. We'll continue to have to pay these bills and will continue to be liable, even though we are not putting any uh, uh, product into the, in the landfill site, and we'll be obliged to uh, carry our responsibility uh, for uh, a number of years. But in the meantime, the costs continue, and it's possible for those costs to rise astronomically. And uh, I'm very disturbed. I just, we just got a, a, a minutes of the last meeting of this group. And it seems to me they've changed the message. Um, and I really can't go into the details of it here, but uh, I, I'm alarmed that, that they're saying that some huge increases in costs of a totally different nature are in the offing. And uh, so we're, we're faced with, with something that's very serious. So the reason I'm bringing this up here is I'd like to know if I have some support if, if you feel that it's important to bring these things up at the, at the meeting on Wednesday and that we need to carry forward and, and uh, perhaps date this, this issue. 
uh, debate this issue and uh, bring it to the attention perhaps of the ministry or whoever is uh, possibly in a position to help us understand this. Councilor Miguel. So just one question because uh, I mean Brock and I have talked about this a, li a little bit since it came back and I, I do have a recollection. I forget which engineering firm was doing the work, whether it was Ross or, or Burnside. Burnside. So I do remember very specifically that we had a PowerPoint presentation from from them on what they were finding, what they were measuring, how the plume, in their opinion, was spreading, and ideas that they had to mitigate that, which included uh, berming and purchase of more land, and I'm sure there was other options as well. I don't recall them coming back with um, any concrete recommendation on to you know, whether this was you know, needed further investigation, or is it factual, does it, you know, because I mean, and I think even spoke to the fact of having it peer reviewed, just to make sure, because I mean, engineers can make mistakes too, and, and it is a very uh, difficult situation. Uh, but I would like to know, and I think I've asked whether, you know, the engineers would have a copy of that presentation somewhere, I'm sure they would, and I don't know whether Brock remembers that or that was before he before came to the right. council, but I, I, I'd like to get a copy of that for, Councillor Bodden to see that as well to inform him a little bit better in his discussions with the committee. Councillor Bailey. So should we be spending some of this money that we're spending on monitoring and just tell them we need an answer and how to fix it? Like who would you ask for that answer? Is it the engineers? Uh, uh, we don't have any choice on the monitoring. They they they, they tell they tell uh, Burnside where to drill and how often to monitor, uh, but I would like to, to respond in a very positive way to what you're saying. I had a little chat with Don Nicholson uh, last week, I believe, uh, and he suggested that uh, his staff are perfectly qualified to do the monitoring. They can read the gauges, and they can put the numbers in to the, uh, to the uh, firm, and they would go into the reports. And so I think this is something that I'm going to mention to Central Huron, uh, Central Huron members of the committee, uh, that would that would cut the cost down, and we could still meet the requirements of uh, of the MOE. Thank you. Um, I think it, I think it'd be in everybody's best interest then if you when you're sitting with Central Huron to see where they want to go with this, because I'm sure that none of us want to go on forever paying money on things that are seeping if the seeping can stop. So Brock, could you talk to them about that and bring their response back to us, maybe as, as a joint venture in both towns, so we just say. If we need to dig a berm, we're going to dig a, put a berm up, we're going to put a berm up. If we need to dig a hole, we're going to dig a hole. But just as you as you suggested, to sit here year after year after year and simply monitor, it's, it's not worth it. So I would suggest, from my point of view from this council, that yes, you should follow that hard and true and say, no, we need to bring this to a resolution. That's my plan. Yeah, okay. The, um, I was just going to say, uh, two years ago, uh, they did cap the the site and uh, the theory was that it, there would be less surface water going down through mm -hmm. and uh, that should uh, mitigate some of the uh, some of the spread of the, the chlorine but the other the other thing was that they aren't getting the cooperation from uh, some of the downstream landowners because they wouldn't the landowner wouldn't let them drill wells on his property and so that's why they went along and drilled wells along the county road so, just through your worship, the one question I would have then, if the site has been capped, do we know that's been affected? How do we know that's been affected? We don't. That, I think, is a question that needs to be answered, whether that was money well spent or not. There was one, uh, at one point, they, uh, they, they spread some uh, soil or clay over, over the site, and it was found not to be effective. So they, they removed that, and they, they changed it to a different level site. And they think that there's some some mitigation from uh, from that coverage. Uh, the apparent apparently the production or the movement of salt has almost ended, like it's gone down uh, over time, but it's still moving. It's a it's a moving. Uh, it's actually uh, doing what Ministry of the Environment always said to do with uh, dangerous goods. Dilution was. Uh, down to that it wasn't a poisonous or bad substance. Uh, but 
but but we are in a number of places we're over the R U G, which is it's a, a, a reasonable use guidelines uh, for for soil or for water. And the the thing of it is, the big part of this plume, most of it is 20 to 30 feet underground. So that's the problem in burning it. Uh, I think we're past the burning stage. It would have been a deep concrete, reinforced concrete wall, possibly at one time. We're past that. Don? Um, one of the things, uh, and Kelly is aware of it, uh, when they're directional drilling, they actually use bentonite clay as a lubricant. I mean, that's what they cap uh, the, the soil with. And uh, it's creating havoc, actually, out at our landfill now. I wonder would Central Huron be amiable to uh, for them to actually take that out there and, and kind of reinforce the capping that has took place? Uh, I'll talk to you after. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a useful thing. They, um, it was another point that I've forgotten momentarily, but uh, I, I, that's that's my plan to raise this at the at the meeting. Uh, Deputy Reed Reach and I will be there, and, and uh, Gary. And it would be interesting to know if there was any tests done before that landfill was open <clears throat> because a number of sites all through this area actually had brine wells at one time because the brine did come to the surface or close to the surface and was there a possibility that part of the chloride plume is from an old natural uh, spring that is pulling salt up. Uh, that would be the real question. Uh, but basically, I still know where the site of the brine well that uh, used to be piped into Lower Town is just across uh, Reed Road uh, on the west side of the first bush. There was uh, some reference to uh that being used as a landfill site as early as eight as 1971, uh, but there are no records then. And I'm sure the ministry wasn't geared up to uh, put all of these restrictions on at that time. Uh, but the other, the other thing I was, I was going to mention is the fact that at one point they decided to uh, move the location of the remaining uh, tan, tannery waste. Yeah. They moved it to a certain area which they thought was safer. Now, <laughs> if they had they had it in their hands at that point, there, well, there surely could have been something better that they could have done than just to move it a few feet and, and uh, hope for the best. But uh, again, anyway, I'm not an engineer, so I don't understand their their thinking behind that. But but it strikes me that at some point uh, there should have been something different then. So I believe there will be discussion next Wednesday at the meeting and it's this Wednesday and that uh, things will develop out of that. I think we've had a, enough discussion for now on that. And if there's Thanks. another subject uh, that councillors would like, Councillor Allen yet? I just have one thing here in this report. I thought, <clears throat> I've had several calls from some repairs of those. How fast are official plans getting done? You, some of them indicated that they had emails that were supposed to be all done quite some time ago. Um, and then they were disturbed that, that their meeting was canceled and now it's not till the 15th of July, I guess, or the 24th. So, um, the day we're going to come tonight, Group. I think probably in our next council meeting they'll come to see if how we can push it on a little, how we can push it on faster to get it done. Um, 
I don't think we're not we're not pointing the finger that Sally's not get the job done. I think she's a very, very busy girl doing her best and maybe maybe need more help or maybe doing something but to help her out. But uh, <clears throat> Okay, make the see that he's a bit fast and he's supposed to be done. Councilor McGowan? Uh, through you to the clerk, I do recall when you sent out a notice that that official plan meeting had been delayed. There was reasons behind that that Sally had provided. I can't, I can't recall the exact reasons. Um, but, but they were good. I mean, there was valid uh, reasons why it had been delayed. I wonder if, did we communicate that to ratepayers effectively enough? Or, or maybe we didn't at all. I mean, maybe that's where we have to do well, there's a number of other things, and that uh, it's development and one uh, form or another. That some of it that we cannot make announcements uh, that people are asking for planning documentation uh, in looking at purchasing properties. And I think that is one of the things that is actually slowing Sally down mm -hmm. because we have to do that when they're asking and that it takes her away from actually getting the official plan work done. Well, I don't think it would be uh, out of place to send Sally just a, a note saying it was discussed. There are concerns from the right pairs out there as there has been from council, and we know that she's working judiciously on it, but just if there's any way that, if there's anything we can do to assist her in moving that along as quickly as possible, I think that would be best for all involved. And maybe there is nothing that can be done, but I think it would uh, be being proactive anyway. Thank you. Other points from council? I agree. Okay. We can do that, that yeah. Work. Okay, uh, moving to the clerk administrator's report. Okay, thank you, Reed. Uh, just to follow up on uh, Councillor Hallahan's uh, comments about the official plan review, uh, you will see notices, um, advertisements in the papers this week and next week to do with the official plan review. One notice deals with the, uh, one advertisement deals with the uh, uh, special meeting taking place on um, July 15th, which is really council announcing that they're undergoing an official plan review. It's a, it's a declaration. Um, and the public is welcome to attend that meeting as they're welcome to attend any council meeting. But the, uh, I think the main um, meeting that will be of interest to our community will be the open house, and that is scheduled for July 24th. And uh, in an effort to, to move, uh, move consulta consultation around the township, we're going to be having that meeting at the Belgrade Community Center on uh, Wednesday, July 24th. So you'll see um, two different notices, um, uh, advertisements uh, in this week's uh, papers as well as next week's papers, and that's we are required to provide those notices within a certain time frame as per the Planning Act. Also wanted to note that um, I provided you with a copy of a draft news release um, announcing the, uh, the agreement between Tucker Smith and the township. Um, so obviously the council approved the, uh, the bylaw and the agreement between Tucker Smith and the township. I think we know that um, Tucker Smith is looking at installing equipment and fiber optic cable at the ESTC and that the ESTC will be a hub that will allow them to expand their telecommunications infrastructure into Blythe and, and the surrounding communities. So it, it's, it's a great news announcement for Blythe as well as North Huron. And uh, Richard Al has uh, managed this uh, behind the scenes on our behalf. And uh, so he and I work together on this news release. And um, if you're in agreement, we'll be issuing this first thing tomorrow morning. I would make a motion to endorse this news release for release immediately and send a letter of thanks on to Richard and whoever else for their efforts. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Just a reminder that uh, North Huron, 
Horace Turnberry and Howick are working together on a, on a mock disaster event for Thursday, July 11th. Uh, there's a, a working group that has been meeting uh, quite frequently for the last several months. There's also a number of other agencies and organizations that are part of that exercise. And uh, so we're, we're looking forward to, to initiating this event and uh, this exercise and, and testing our emergency management plan and our emergency preparedness. So uh, um, there will be an opportunity for, for observers on July 11th, but as part of this exercise, we, we will be um, calling on our emergency operations center. And I, I know that Reeve and Deputy Reeve are part of that. So I will provide council with more information, but just a reminder that's coming up on Thursday, July 11th. I'm also hoping to finalize a meeting with Blythe businesses for either July 8th or July 11th. And uh, you recall from our meeting with, with the Black businesses last November that uh, we uh, promised them that we would meet more regularly to, uh, to talk about issues and projects and opportunities. And so we'll, uh, we'll finalize a meeting with, with them for some time in early July. And that meeting will take place at the ESTC. We've also uh, confirmed a meeting with uh, local real estate agents and property developers for Wednesday, July 10th. And this is an opportunity for North Carolina Council and senior staff to uh, provide uh, agents and developers with, uh, with an update on some of the initiatives that we're working on now in terms of economic development and marketing and so on. We also want to hear from them as to what is working uh, in their line of work, what they're hearing from prospective investors and potential residents. And so uh, we'll look forward to having a meeting on July 10th. And I also wanted to uh, share my time with Connie. Connie yeah, just a couple of things. Um, a goal identified in our strategic plan was to ensure that our residents are engaged and well-informed. And uh, there was discussion around how people receive their communications differently. So the last little while, I guess, I have been practicing, if you can, um, using Twitter and how we can effectively use it through our um, council meetings. Tonight we are actually tweeting live after Gary and I kind of reviewed some of the things. We're going to be concentrating on highlights of the meeting. Uh, might not send out very many um, tweets, uh, but highlights and specifically things that are have a positive impact on um, community engagement and economic development will be the things that I'll be focusing on and sending out. Um, one more thing, um, our North Huron video for, um, economic development from Chris Cooper is actually ready this week. Um, very excited about it. We will actually reveal that, a big reveal, on the June 17th council meeting we'll present it. So, that's it. Okay, thank you. And, uh, three items for, for in camera. One deals with um, proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality, uh, specifically 129 Josephine Street, Wingham. Another issue is uh, advice that is subject to so a solicitor <coughs> privilege, specifically BIA. And thirdly, uh, labor relations or employee negotiations, fire chief recruitment process. Okay, thank you, Gary. And I probably should have had it in the Reeves report, but I will add it in. Deputy Reeve Reach and myself are unable to go in the rib contest uh, musical muskrat. So the <coughs> Deputy Reeve Reach has the recipe, and we have the equipment that count other counselors can use if they want to do it, but uh, the, we're just otherwise booked for that time period so that uh, if there's going to be a council team, other counselors will have to come forward. Could you prepare it in advance and fast freeze it? <laughs> <laughs> yep, can you leave? The, the ribs are purchased uh, that day on site so that you can't do that but I would be even prepared to attempt to teach Councillor Bailey how to cook ribs. <laughs> how big can we get the fire going? Uh, 
I'll be down perfect. there, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll consider it, but I have to check my calendar because it's a weekend. And they book up fast. And you're golf. Oh, that's right. Oh. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, uh, to be considered and getting back to the thank you. Um, moving forward, uh, the, the required in camera session. Do I have a motion to go in camera? Deputy Reeve and. Public dollar. Public dollar. First steps. <laughs> Thank you. Public gallery questions or comments? Could you say that a little louder? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. They'll pick that up. Don't worry. <laughs> Anybody? Mr. Daly seconds. All in favor? We will have a short recess. <laughs>